Before we start the video, I just want you to make sure you have the correct branch checked out. You want to have saving user coordinates in a database start. That's the branch you want to have checked out. And before we start writing code, I want to give you, for those of you who don't really know Firestore well, or you're not very familiar with Firestore, I just want to give you a bit of a tour because we're going to be using it pretty extensively in this course. So right now, this is this is Firestore. This is, this is the database. This is where all the application data is stored for the app. Right now, all we have is a chat rooms collection and a users collection. The chat rooms collection is where all the data for the chat rooms is stored. So that's like the chat room names, when they were made, who, are they, who they were made by, um, messages that get sent in the chat room, what users are in the chat room, stuff like that. Uh, the users collection has um, just information on the users. So like there's one of the users, it has their avatar, their email, user ID, and username, and another user that's my user, and then another one that I made right there. So um, yeah, I just want to give you a bit of a bit of a tour. So you have the user ID is kind of the key of the, the document right here. You can see it matches this. So this user ID matches the key here, and it's the same for all these. Um, and then you have a chat rooms collection, which has chat messages, a collection of user lists. So all the users that are in the chat room, um, whoops, a chat messages collection. So these are all the messages that got sent in the chat room. You can see these all say, it says, hmm, there's a message there. So you probably get the picture. So anyway, our goal with this is to, with this with this video is I wanna create another collection, a collection named user, um, user locations. So, I'm just going to create this for the time being. I'm going to delete it in a second. So user locations, um, and this this is where I want to store all the locations for the user. So each of these, each of the documents in the collection is going to be a user ID. So this will be like some user's ID, and then it'll have like their uh, geo point. So maybe location. It'll be a geo point of latitude and longitude. And it'll be something like that, right? There's going to be a user ID, and it'll show their location, um, and it'll be a whole bunch of those. So that's that's the idea with this new collection that I'm going to make, and we're going to populate that data um, two ways. We need to get the each user's individual details from the user's collection. So this user, for example, if I wanted to add a GPS coordinate uh, to our new collection, I'd have to query this information, capture that. And then I'd have to. Um, then I'm going to use the get last known location method to retrieve their location, and then combine that information and put it into the users list. So that probably sounded confusing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the completed version of the app, and then I'm going to show you what the what the users list collection looks like in Firestore from the completed version of the app. So I just ran the completed version of the app on this device, and what happens when you run it is. Uh, main activity comes into view and all that process kind of gets started. So if I refresh this, I should see a new collection called users list that was just created when I started the app. Um, sorry, users, user locations. So this is what we're going to aim to make. If I click on user location, we have a user, which is the one that I'm currently logged in with. Uh, we have the user information, so the avatar, email, user ID, and username. And we also have a geo point and a timestamp that, that geo point has been updated. Uh, you can see it's updating constantly. That's because in the completed version of the app, there's a service a service that runs in the background that keeps updating the location. For this video, all we're going to do is upload it once. So we're not going to build the service yet. We're going to do that later. We're just focusing on actually building this collection and getting this kind of started. So that's what we're going to do in this video. So to, so to start this whole process off, we first need a data structure to insert into the database because so this this whole thing here this document is a data structure the data structure contains a geo point a timestamp and a user object so we need to create this data structure uh, in Android Studio um, for example just to kind of clear it up uh, if I go into the users collection this is what a user object looks like but in the user locations collection this is what a user location object looks like so we need to create this object so I'm going to go into Android Studio and go into our models package, right click on it, go to new, and I'm gonna call it user location. And as I said, it's going to have a geo point for one thing. Um, 
Let's use underscores. I, I, I usually use underscores as opposed to the regular Java syntax of doing things uh, with anything to do with Firebase. It's just a habit I had because of the way that the Firebase database was, not Firestore, the way the Firebase database was. You needed to do this or you'd get issues. So this is just kind of a habit of mine. Uh, the next is a timestamp. So I'm gonna use something that you probably haven't seen before. I'm gonna use a server timestamp annotation and um, I'm going to call this uh, timestamp. So it's a string called server timestamp. This is something that's unique to Firestore. It, um, what it does is if you pass null to the timestamp when you insert this object into the database, it will automatically insert a, um, a timestamp of the exact time that it was created. So it's a very convenient thing. And last we have our user object. Uh, next we need to insert our default constructor. So I'm going to press alt insert, hit the constructor, highlight all the fields, and insert that. I'm also going to copy this, paste it below, and make an empty constructor. Okay, now alt insert one more time, get the getter and setter methods, highlight all those, and just because we can uh, get the two string method in case we want to print something to the log. Now we're going to go back into main activity and we're going to write all the code for uh, the first part is going to be retrieving the user details from Firestore. So that means uh, going into the users collection and retrieving the user details for whatever user is authenticated. And then we're going to use the GPS coordinates retrieved from the get last no known location method. And we're going to combine those, th that, those two bits of information and create a user location object. As you can see, it has a geo point and a user object. And then we're going to insert those into the database. All right, so to start off, we're going to create a global user information object, or sorry, user location object. So global user location. Now I'm gonna build the method for actually inserting the user location object into Firestore, into the database. So let's go down here. I'm gonna go private void, I'm gonna call it save user location. It'll take nothing and it will return nothing. Uh, first, it's always good to check to make sure that the user location object does not equal null. We don't want to insert a null object. And then we need a document reference. Call it location ref equals MDB, which MDB is just a Firestore instance. You can see it instantiated right there. We need to reference the right collection. So get string r.string dot collection user locations. And then the document. The document is going to be identified by their ID. So whoops. So we have Firebase auth, get instance, get UID. You can always get a reference to the user ID, uh, the authenticated user by writing that in with, uh, with Firestore, with Firebase. Um, so this is referencing our users collection. I'll just remind you, that's gonna be this right here. So if I was just to type, just to kind of clarify things, for those of you who aren't familiar with Firestore, if I was just to type user, uh, user locations there, it's exactly the same thing. It's just, it's just uh, from the strings file. Okay, now we can use our location reference and we want to use it to set our user location object and add an oncomplete listener, new oncomplete listener. Then if the task is successful, we know that that information was successfully inserted into the database. And in that case, I can just uh, write a log for debugging. And actually I've written this out ahead of time. I'm not going, I'm just looking at the source code, the completed version, I'm just going to add that, um, that way you don't have to watch me uh, type this out. And it looks like I actually have a typo, so I spelt user location wrong, so it's a good thing I did that. I'm going to copy that, replace all these, and replace that to the correct spelling. So there we go. So if the user loca location is successfully saved into the database, then we're gonna see this log and we'll see the latitude and longitude print out. So now when do we wanna call this? We want to call this right after we get the last known location because that way we should have the last piece of the puzzle. So the process is, uh, we're not, we haven't uh, finished the process yet, but uh, kind of more like step two is going to be um, save the user location, or sorry, sorry. Step two is going to be get the last known location. Step three is going to be save the user location. We haven't worked on step one yet, but we're gonna get there. So this method is going to be called in here. So when we already have the geo point, so we can do uh, user location, set the geo point, there's our geo point, and then user location, set the timestamp. And remember, we need to set this to null. 
we need to set this to null because that's going to cause Firestore to automatically input a current timestamp. So whenever that data is inserted, because I use the server timestamp annotation, if I pass null here, it's going to insert a server timestamp. And then after that, I want to do save user location. So some of you might be a little confused because I kind of I kind of did this in the reverse order. Because like I said, this, this is kind of like step two, getting the GPS coordinates. This is step three, which is actually uploading it to Firestore. So what is step one? Well, we have to look at our user object. What else does our user object need? It needs a timestamp and a geo point, which it gets from here, but it also needs a user object. So we still need to set the user object. And that's what step one is. We need to retrieve the user details for the authenticated user and then set it to our user location object. So that's what we're going to do now. So uh, I will write another new method. It's going to be called get user details. It's going to take nothing and return nothing. Uh, once again, before we do anything, I just want to check to make sure that the user location object is not null. And um, oh, sorry, no. We actually want to check if it is null because if it is null, then we know that it's a brand new object. Nothing has been set yet because if we look up here, the object is null in the declaration. There's no other place that it's been set. So here we need to instantiate a new one. So user location. And we've used a, we have an empty constructor option here. So that's why I'm able to pass no parameters. It's just a brand new, brand new object right there. So now we need to go about getting the user details. So we're going to use something called a document reference. Uh, so I'm going to call it user ref and it equals MDB. Um, we have to reference the collection. We want to reference the uh, users collection. So collection users and then reference a document and the document is identified by the ID. So get instance or get instance, get user ID. And so if you're confused by that, let's take a look at Firestore. If we look at the users collection, we have the user ID. Um, we have, so this is the collection name. This is the collection itself. And these are all the documents in the collection. So this is the document for the username Mitch Tabian, the document for Mitch, and the document for Jessica. So if I go back to Android Studio, I hope you can see that that's what I'm doing. We're getting using the reference to Firestore, writing collection, referencing the user's collection, and then referencing the document that's specified by their unique user ID. So now I can do the same sort of thing, except we're going to call the get method instead of the set method, since we're retrieving something, add an oncomplete listener again. And by the way, if you're interested in Firestore, I have a whole course specifically on Firestore on Pluralsight. Actually, I'm going to, I'll, I'll even just show it to you really quickly, quickly here. Uh, you can just go to Pluralsight.com. You can search uh, Firebase on Android and you can see all my courses come up here. So we have user authentication, cloud messaging, cloud functions, and crashlytics, the real-time database and cloud storage. And then we also have my cloud Firestore course. So if you want to know more about Firestore, I know this course, I don't go into a lot of detail about it. Those courses, I go really deep. So check those out. And if you can't afford Pluralsight for whatever reason, even though it's only $30 a month, uh, just send me an email, mitch at tabian.ca, and I can probably give you a month free, more than likely, depending on how many people email me, more than likely I can give you a month free and you can try it out for free. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so if the task is successful, then we know we're good to go. So let's write a log that says um, successfully got the user details and I can get the uh, user object user user equals task dot get result dot to object and we want to reference a user object and then we want to do m user location set user pass the user and then we want to call get last no get last known location because remember this is step one get user details this is step two get last known location, then we have the user, we have the location, and we can save that location into Firestore. So that's kind of the, that's the overall process. Now we need to do one last thing before we move on. We need to look for everywhere in the code where we're calling get last, no, last known location. We want to replace it with get user details because uh, remember this is step two, but we need to start the whole process at step one. So let's look uh, everywhere in the code for get last known location. I'm going to delete that, right, get user details. Again, get user details. Get 
user details. I think that's it. That, yeah, that's it. All right, let's run it and try it out. Let's make sure that the information is being retrieved and also successfully inserted into the database. So I just ran the app and it looks like it, we got a crash. Uh, if I open up the logcat down here, it says uh, annotated with server timestamp, but class is a string instead of date. And yep, that's a mistake of mine. A server timestamp needs to be a date object. So we go change that to a date object. And there we go, import the Java util uh, date class that can go on the previous line. And we need to change the constructor now. Make sure all that's a date object. Make sure the getter and setter methods are good. And that should be good. So we'll try running that again. And we'll take another look. Okay, so the application started, meaning that main activity is brought into view. Now, if I refresh this, we should see a user locations collection that wasn't there before. So there we have the user locations collection. And if I click on it, we can see my location, the timestamp of the exact time, and everything is correct. So everything is working as it should here. So that's all fine. That, that's going to work fine. But um, the practically speaking, this isn't the most efficient way to do this because if we if we retrieve the user location every single time, that's not really efficient. The user details aren't going to change that often. If we retrieve them only once every time the activity starts, that should be more than enough. We shouldn't have to retrieve the user location, the user details more than once um, after the activity has started. So we're not going to fix it in this video, but I just kind of want to write the pseudo code so that you know what to expect for the next videos for kind of optimizing this method. So really what we want to do is we want to say if the user location is null, then we do want to retrieve uh, the user details from Firestore because it's null. But if it's already been retrieved, or in other words, else, um, we want to just get the location. Just get the location, meaning call the get last known location method. So it, basically we need a way to, um, it would be great to have a way if you could store the user location or the user details kind of as a global or a client kind of thing. And that's what we're gonna actually do. That's um, what I mentioned in the introduction videos of the course. We have this user client um, application kind of object. We're gonna use that to store a reference, a singleton reference of the user object but I don't want to get too much into it now. We'll talk about it in the next video.